Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Betts. I'm the Chief Scientist here at Go Chemist, and I'm here today to present our next video called Ions, Ions Everywhere. You may recall from previous videos that we talked about that chemical soup in your backyard, the thing that your kids are swimming in that might be contributing to their asthma or other really potentially bad health problems. And today we're going to talk about a newer, more modern approach to pool chemistry, one that's much safer, much more convenient. But in order to do that, you have to kind of understand a little bit of chemistry that's going on around this, this science. Don't worry, the science, the chemistry is really simple, and I'm going to make it really easy to understand for you. This approach uses elemental metals. The, the specific elements we're talking about are copper and silver. We all know silver, everyone has silverware, people wear silver rings. Uh, copper is used to transport water through your house through copper piping. They can also be used to keep your backyard swimming pool safe by a process called ionization. Now don't worry, it's a big chemistry word, we're going to explain that here in a minute. Let me show you right now how an ion is formed. An ion is simply a charged particle, by the way. It's just a plus two or a plus one charge, or minus one or a minus two charge. It doesn't have to be plus or minus. Ions are just simply charged particles. Now, let's take a look. Here we have silver. This, the chemical symbol for silver is Ag. It's elemental silver. In elemental silver, and there is an electron that's just zipping around silver, minding its own business, doing its thing. And there is our electron. It's just sitting there flying around the silver. If you hit this element now with an electrical current, this electron will get enough energy and fly off. It will leave the silver behind and fly off into space. When it does that, you form what's called a silver ion. The silver, because it's, it's lost one electron, electrons are negatively charged, the resulting effect must be a positively charged silver. The silver is an ion because it has a plus charge. All right? So that's how ions are formed, specifically for silver. Let's take a specific look at copper now. Here's copper. The symbol for copper is Cu. And again, copper now will just draw its electrons flying around. Oops. Here we go. Draw its electrons. Now here's the flight path for the electrons. Here's one electron here and one electron there. Notice copper has two electrons now that can be thrown out. Hit that element with enough electricity, and these electrons will fly off into space, giving you what's known as a copper 2 or plus 2 ion. That is basically how ions are formed. It's a very simplistic look at it, but it's basically what's going on. You're hitting the elements with electrical current, causing them to lose their electrons and form ions. Now, I've given you a small intro into ionization. Ionization is a very complicated field. There's whole, there's whole fields of chemistry related to this. So we're just giving you a brief intro to it. Now, but let's also take a look at how do we actually do this in reality? In reality, it's a process called electrolysis. Now, you might have heard of things called electroplating and things of that nature. Electroplating is very similar to electrolysis. So let's take a close look at it. If you look over here, I have drawn a simple schematic for electrolysis. These two blue hash bars are simply rods of copper, just pure copper in rod form, having a current pass through them. When a current is passed through them, the copper that's sitting inside that rod will lose two electrons and form this copper plus two ion that we spoke about earlier. When it does that, the copper now becomes water soluble and will, will leave the copper rod and go into the water solution of your pool. When that copper goes into the water solution of your pool, the concentration of the copper plus two ions increases. That's a good thing, because the copper plus two ions increasing in solution now can go about the business of killing bacteria, fungus, and algae. Silver works in much the same way. Pass a current through it, the silver will lose one electron, the ion will go into solution and go about finding bacteria and eliminating them, or also fungus and all those other kind of nasty things that grow in your pool. So let's take, now that we've seen how ions are formed and a little bit about electrolysis, let's take a little bit of a closer look at how these ions can go about killing bacteria, fungus, and all the other nasty things in your pool. Pardon me one moment while I erase this board. So let's just draw up a simple bacteria. Okay, now that we've described how ions are formed and how they're made by electrolysis, let's take a closer look now at how these ions will go about killing viruses, bacteria, fungus in your pool. Viruses and bacteria, specifically bacteria, they're just nasty things. So let's drop a nasty bacteria on our board. Here's a gross looking nasty bacteria. 
surviving, thriving in your pool right now. Let's imagine then you have an electrolysis unit on your pool and you have some silver ions floating around waiting to kill bacteria. And the silver, by some mechanism, will adhere to, this, to the membrane of the bacteria. It doesn't matter how it does it, that's not important. The fact is it just does it. When the silver ion adheres or interacts with the membrane of the bacteria, that's bad news for the bacteria. It's going to force the bacteria's membrane to change, alter itself, and eventually it will spill out its, its contents into your pool. Let's take a look at how that would work. Basically, after the interaction is formed, the cell membrane of the bacteria gets really weak and more or less leaky. It starts to leak out its contents very, very rapidly. And the contents of the, cell back, of the bacteria cell will come out of your pool, rendering that bacteria dead. The nice thing is, versus a chlorinated pool, where if a chlorinated pool works very much the same way, the chlorinated pool, one chlorine molecule, one bacteria, the chlorine is rendered in inactive after that. It basically uh, interacts with the cell membrane of the bacteria and doesn't let go. With a silver copper pool, the silver or the copper will interact, kill the bacteria or the virus or whatever, and that same silver or copper ion will go about doing it again. It's not a one-trick pony. It'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. That's why ionized pools are so, are so useful and so beneficial and so convenient because a little bit of something like copper or silver ions goes a long way to keeping your pool safe and easy to use for you and your children. Again, my name is Dr. Russell Betts. I'd like to thank you for watching our video entitled Ions, Ions Everywhere. After watching this video, I hope that you've come to the conclusion that there is a safer, more convenient way to maintain your backyard swimming pool. The days of chlorination, chlorinating your swimming pool, being the backyard chemist on the weekends are, are numbered. Those days are coming to a rapid conclusion because pool ionization is the way of the future. It's safer, it's more convenient, and it's more effective than the chlorinated versions of the swimming pool. It will allow you to have more time on the weekends to spend with your kids. It will allow you to enjoy your swimming pool without worrying about all the nasty chemicals that might be in there. And it'll keep, it'll keep your pool uh, even more clean than the chlorinated systems will do it. Again, my name is Dr. Russell Betts. I hope you've enjoyed our video. And I invite you to watch any, number one of, any of the number of videos on our website on uh, pool chemistry and backyard pool chemistry. Thank you.